I know not what costs others, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Truth Stream Media with Aaron Dykes and Melissa Melton on Unbound Radio. Well, we actually have a list of stuff here that we wanted to kind of bring up having to do with things that DARPA has come out with because I think all the time in the news we're seeing people talk about how DARPA came up with this new thing this week and it's super awesome. It's the new, you know, big dog robot that can throw a cinder block with a metal arm that comes out of its head. Who needs that, by the way? And so they're all the time coming out with these robots and things and and it's talking about how trendy and super cool it is. But we wanted to actually talk about some of the other stuff they're doing. And then as we're mentioning these things and talking about them, think about them all it together. Think about how these interact with each other and how that affects us. Okay, so not only are they making all these robots, they've got jumping robots, swimming robots, climbing robots. They've got robots that dodge obstacles. They've got six-legged robots. There's a cheetah that's the fastest robot ever made. There's a robot ape that climbs trees. They've got a, a robo-ostrich they've got. I mean, they, they're doing lifelike humanoid robots, and they also have this weapons they come out with, like they have death ray lasers, actual death ray lasers, not FBI paid for guy in a basement building at death ray lasers, but actual ones with unlimited magazines that they're going to start putting on drones. But here's some other stuff they're also doing that you may or may not be aware of. Uh, this story also came out. They were hacking into a squid's nervous system, central nervous system. And they were using electric signals to force the squid to change its colors. So they were basically perfecting mind control in the squid. They're also studying um, our fight or flight response. They want to explore the neuroscience of our threat responses to use neuroeconomic models to study the way we move and how that changes when we're faced with threats. So put those just those two things together. They're, they're, they can mind control with electric signals, and they're studying our fight or flight response. To me, the only reason they would need that is to be able to shut it off. Uh, moving on, Regina Dugan came out recently. She's a former DARPA, DARPA head, but she now is the leader of special projects for Motorola, which is owned by Google. And this is, uh, she says, this is a quote, we got to do a lot of epic expletive when I was at DARPA. Uh, and she says, now they're even doing better stuff. And she was showing her electronic tattoo that she has. So it's an electronic tattoo. It's a barcode on her arm, and she was showing that off and how that can be used to authenticate your password or your authenticate you on online and everything instead of using a password. So if this is not the mark of the beast, if it's not in any way, why does it seem like they're basically taking that page out of Revelations and using it? I mean, right? And she went on to say that they also have vitamin authentication which is a pill that you swallow, and your whole body then becomes your password. It's incredible. And just part of that technology, I know a lot of it's based on gaming theory, uh, which probably does play into video games, but I know it principally means being able to predict your response, as you mentioned. And, And that means knowing the most likely options, whether it's two, three, four options, whether it's multiple choice and basically planning for that response and then in a prioritized a list. I mean, maybe you saw the headline <laughs> from uh, last year in 2012, new algorithm predicts your future movements within 65 feet of accuracy. And they found that essentially we repeat the same basic movements on average over and over, go to the same basic corner store, the same job location, the same home or apartment location, same base of friends, and if they're tracking that on your t- on your cell phone or on your Facebook updates or through an implant chip, they can pretty much predict what you're likely to do next as well. And well, guarding that really would take some effort. I they're going to move beyond that. They're actually working on something called biometrics at a distance. So that's going to build a sensor that can remotely identify you uh, farther away, tell you out from a crowd, sense your heartbeat through a wall. I mean, that's beyond just censoring you but yeah i mean this list i don't even know what i should get to next there's so did you talk about the internet yet i'm not to that part yet oh yeah they want to let's see what was that they're gonna learn to control a rat's brain over the internet actually they already have it says the government mind control may not be as far-fetched as it sounds after 15 years of research they found a way to transmit information from one brain to another thereby controlling the thoughts of the test subjects 
And I was just going to say, admittedly, back to 1966, the very beginning of the Internet was an actual DARPA project. From the beginning, it was so a was Department GPS, of Defense yeah. application. And you say, oh, I heard about university uh, academics being the start of the Internet. They're under the Department of they Defense. They are getting paid by them. And this is called BrainLink. Back at Unbound Radio, I'm your co-host, Melissa Melton, here with Aaron Dykes for True Stream Media. And I just want to paint this picture for you, Aaron. I was talking about some of the things DARPA did before the break, and I'm getting ready to play those into an even creepier picture. Now, this is something that Obama announced, the Brain Project. It's the Brain Research Through Advancing Innovative Neurotechnologies. It's an initiative that he gave $100, 000, $100 million, excuse me, dollars to in his fiscal 2014 budget, and he announced it at the April State of the Union address. But this basically will produce pictures of your brain showing how individual brain cells and complex neural circuits interact at the speed of thought and explore how the brain records, processes, uses, stores, and retrieves vast quantities of information and the links between that and between brain function and behavior. And DARPA is actually working on that. And at the same time they're working on that, they're working on building robots with real brains in a different project called the Physical Intelligence Program, which is basically a Pentagon-funded team of researchers that have constructed a machine that would allow robots to act independently. And one of the guys on the thing says it's going to be uh, looking and thinking like a human brain that they're going to put into a robot. So it goes right back to Kurzweil that we talked about last hour. So they're controlling rats' brains. They're checking out fight or flight. They're on a program right now that that's President Obama's funding $100 million to having to do with how our brains work while simultaneously at the same time building robots that function with real brains. And then all of that you have. Remember the movie Avatar with the Blue People? Oh, yeah. Remember that? They actually also have a project, and they have creatively called it Avatar, where it's it's basically the same as the movie but with robots instead of aliens. And the goal is to... Uh, develop interfaces and algorithms that enable soldiers to effectively partner with semi-autonomous bipedal machines and act as soldier surrogates. Two-legged robot destroyers, pretty much Terminator. In fact, a lot of those movies, James Cameron and Bond, are really what we can only assume are predictive programming to get the population used to those coming trends. Because l- movie after movie comes true, and we'll probably read off some of those We're going to do time. that next time. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's funny you say the predictive programming, because here's the final piece of this DARPA puzzle. This is also what they're working on. It's a program called Narrative Networks, and it seeks to master the science of propaganda It says they're going to take narratives and make them quantitatively analyzable in a rigorous, transparent, and repeatable fashion. And what they're doing here is they're studying the effects of oxytocin. So that's basically considered a love chemical. And the role of that in human thought processes is being studied. And this is a quote, in an effort to enhance public messages from the U.S. military. So we're not talking about just any propaganda here, people. We're talking about high-tech, chemically enhanced biochemically enhancing us to basically be more susceptible to government lies. And this stuff goes actually beyond the mark of the beast. I don't know if some of this may have been predicted in the Bible. I guess it depends on how you interpret symbols. Uh, But certainly they're interested in a mark of the beast system with the centralized payment and authorization. They're very much pursuing the cashless society. But along the lines of Kurzweil and other prominent MIT scientists, who basically been mouthpieces for where DARPA is headed and where other governmental, academic, industrial, complex uh, technologists are taking society is towards, yes, scanning the brain. Why? Because they believe those who are chosen to be advanced, to become transhumanists, to become... And it's not everybody. Mm, That's to become a more list. human than human. And that actually is where eugenics actually leads down the road, is towards transhumanism. All that is so they believe they can scan your brain if you're selected and put you into the larger centralized database. Copies of your brain will be distributed. They can be shared and read by other people in the society. And somehow you'll be supposedly at an equal footing with these advanced intelligent machines that are well, that's actually the next probably going to enslave them as well. As what's that's the happen. next movie script I'll be working on. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, wait, wasn't that kind of done in Zardoz? It goes on forever, but Ray Kurzweil <laughs> did predict it in Age of Spiritual Machines. Not a real I'm prediction, sorry. though. It's an agenda. We're going to be back. This is True Stream Media with your host. I'm Aaron Dykes, and this is Melissa Melton. Hi, guys. And I don't want to be part of your counterfeit system. I don't want your counterfeit money. I don't want your counterfeit politics. I don't want to be replaced by a counterfeit robot that's supposed to imitate what I'm supposed to do. And I definitely don't want your counterfeit food. But, Melissa, you had a point you were going to make about Oh, I just wanted to know if you wanted to hear a DARPA fun fact, honey. Why not? Well, back in 2003, news surfaced the Pentagon was launching a sweeping new research project called the Embryonic Lifelong Program which aimed to collect every single piece of information available on a person to populate a massive database with the goal to, quote, trace the threads of an individual's life. So Wired reported on this. They said the project would include every email sent or received, every picture taken, every web page serviced, every phone call made, every TV show watched, every magazine read, in addition to a GPS tracker and biomedical and audiovisual sensors to record everything a person said, heard, and saw, in addition to their medical information, and supposedly it was canceled after civil, civil liberties advocates, you know, they kind of complained just a little um, about the project's privacy implications. So supposedly that was canceled. What's privacy? What's <laughs> What's freedom? What's anything? So we've been talking about DARPA, Defense, defense Advanced Research Projects. I just picture them in a room playing Sting and uh, every move you make, every, every breath, breath you take. Every you take. You haven't even mentioned <laughs> IARPA. Oh, IARPA. Yeah, IARPA does for the NSA much what DARPA does for the military. They do for the NSA, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's much more black ops. It's very hard to even find anything on what they're doing. But I know one of the projects I read about is using archival data to try and predict the future. So they want to predict the future. The they want to control stuff. the future. And they think with big data they can monitor, predict, analyze our events in real time. I guess while DARPA is pushing the future. I don't know. IARPA is going to predict it. I don't know. <laughs> Technology has done a lot of bad.